Welcome to Human Pincushion Productions' performance of The Shadow People, an original tale of fantasy written by Richard Thorne and edited by Riley Whalen. Originally performed in 1953 for the Hall of Fantasy, a series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unknown, and the unusual. Come with me, friends. We shall descend into the world of unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of the Shadow People. When did we first discuss it? Ah, yes. Brian and Elaine and I. It was in my apartment. There was only one light on in the entire place. Ah! What's wrong? Elaine, what's the matter? Oh, it's silly, but but I thought I saw something in the doorway over there. Where? Over there, right there. David, where are you going? Over to that doorway, just to let you know nothing's here. There. You see, Elaine? Nothing was wrong. Nothing at all. Are you satisfied that there is no one else here but us? Yes, I... I'm sorry. I just thought that I'd... Leave the light on! I'm sorry, I thought that... Put them back on, David, please! All right. Well, what's bothering you? I don't know, it's just that... Tell us about it, Elaine. Tell us what's bothering you. You promise that you... you won't laugh at me? Of course not. Brian? Well, Elaine, I'm your brother, so if something's bothering you, I'd like to know about it. All right, then. The reason I was so upset was the fact that I saw someone or something standing in that doorway. But David showed you that there was no one else in here. When the lights were put on, you saw for yourself that you were alone. I'm not talking about something you you can see in the light, Brian. I'm not talking about a human being. Well, then what's all this about, Elaine? In darkness, I, I saw something that can't be seen in a lighted area. And I've seen it several times before. You're sure you're not imagining this? Oh, I don't have that good an imagination, Brian. How long have you... have you seen this thing? Well, it... it started about six weeks ago. You were in Detroit on business, Brian. Mom and Dad were on vacation. I was in the house by myself, in the library. There was only one light on, right above me as I was reading. Several times, I thought that something was watching me. I felt that there was someone in the room with me standing right behind me. Every so often, I'd glance over my shoulder, but there seemed to be nothing there. And then, I thought I heard someone whispering. At first, I wasn't sure, but when I heard it again, I got up and looked all over the house. Out in the hallway, it was almost entirely black. I looked over my shoulder, and I saw this huge, hulking shape. And I heard a voice, or... Or rather, the whisper of a voice? I couldn't distinguish the words. But that dark shape seemed to be moving towards me. Luckily, I was near a light switch. The minute the light flooded the hallway, the shape was gone. As long as there's light, I know it can't hurt me. I know it can't reach me. Well, you might have imagined it, you know. Of course that's possible, but I'm sure I didn't. It was so real. So real, that shape in the darkness. It was the very essence of evil itself. There was a doctor I knew of, a Dr. Azalius. I had heard that she knew quite a good deal about the supposed supernatural manifestations which had taken place in the world. I went to her to see if she knew anything that might explain the story Elaine had told us. Yeah? What can I do for you? I have an appointment with Dr. Azalius. Oh, yeah, yes. She mentioned something about it. Yeah, Mr. Drake? Yes. Yeah, you can come inside. Thank you. Dr. Hacelius is in the study. Please, come with me. Doctor, a visitor for you. Oh, yes. Bring him in. You may go now. You got it, Doctor. 
Mr. Drake. Yes. Sit down, please. There's a chair over there. Thank you, ma'am. Now, what is the nature of your visit? Well, I understand, Dr. Azalius, that you have a great knowledge for the supernatural manifestations which have occurred here on Earth. Great knowledge, Mr. Drake. No, hardly that. I only scratched the surface in my years of study. Perhaps I can help you. Then again, perhaps I cannot. Well, may I tell you a story? By all means, good sir. All right. Now, this didn't happen to me, doctor, but to my fiance. It seems that about six weeks ago, when she was alone... But when the light came on, the dark form appeared. And that's the story, ma'am, as much as I can remember. Mm-hmm. I see. It's a strange tale you tell. I'm fully aware of that, Doctor. You say that she seemed to hear whispered voices? Yes, that's what she says. I see. A moment, please. I have a book in my files. Ah, yes, here it is. Yes, I believe this is the one. Perhaps I may be able to help you after all. Let me see. This is a very ancient book, Mr. Drake. I seem to remember... Yes! Here is an account of an occurrence similar to yours. We shall live on the earth, and they shall not see us. Shall yes, it not see been us. By the ruler of yes, it has been foretold by the ruler of the darkness. They know of us, and they will know that we are their companions, for we are the shadow people. I knew I had read something similar to the story you've told me, Mr. Drake. Dr. Azalius, what can we do? Well, give me a little time. Let me see if I can find any more references to these people of the darkness. One more thing. Yes? Be sure that your fiancé is never left alone at night. Be sure that there is some living thing, animal or human, which accompanies her every second of the night. For she is in danger, Mr. Drake. Terrible danger. That night, the night of the day I had seen Azalea's, Elaine's mother died in her sleep. When she failed to appear for breakfast, Elaine's father went upstairs to see what was wrong. When he entered her room, he discovered that she was dead. The family doctor couldn't explain it, for Elaine's mother had been in perfect health. A few weeks later, I was out at the house spending a weekend with them. I glanced at the clock on the mantel, and it showed 11. I can't understand why Brian hasn't returned from town. Well, he said he had some extra work to catch up on. He told me this morning that he might be late. Well, eleven o'clock. I'm going upstairs. Glad you came out, David. Good seeing you again. It's a pleasure to be here, sir. Well, don't stay up too late. See you both in the morning. Good night. Good night, Dad. Good night, Mr. Davis. He isn't the same, David. Ever since Mother died, he hasn't been himself. I didn't realize that until tonight. He's changed. I only hope that he'll start living again. After she died, it it seems that a part of him died with her. Elaine, have you been... I mean, have you seen anything else since you spoke to me last? 
No, I haven't. Ever since Mother died, nothing's happened. Well, I only hope that... What's that? It came from upstairs. Come on. Oh, you don't think... I don't know what to think. I only hope that... Oh, David, David, if anything's happened to him... We'll see in a moment. There's no light in his room. You wait here, Elaine. Where's the light? Over to your left. David, what's wrong? Why didn't you leave the light on? He's dead. No. No, I don't believe you. There's nothing more I can do. We'll have to notify the police. Tell me it's not true, David. Tell me it's not true. I'm sorry, Elaine. I wish I could. The laughter that came from that room was eerie, quiet. The voice itself was unearthly, with no substance to it. It sounded as if, as if it came from the darkness itself. After the burial, Dr. Azalius got in touch with me. She said that she wanted to meet both Elaine and Brian, that she wanted to talk about the three of us. Accordingly, a few nights later, she came out to the house. Miss Davis, will you tell me just when you saw the first manifestation? Um, about two months ago when Brian was in Detroit. Now, Miss Davis, you have even seen this apparition in the company of other people. Is that correct? Yes, at David's apartment. All right. Now, I'll tell you what I think. You are in deadly danger, Miss Davis. These beings want to claim you. So far, they have no success. Only in the darkness do they have power. Little by little, step by step, they have been removing the obstacles in their way to reaching you. First your mother, and then your father, Miss Davis, both died in the same fashion. In the darkness, death struck at them. Now tell me, do you feel their presence here in this room as I talk to you now? Yes. Turn out the lights, Brian. But- Stand by the switch. If you please, Brian, if anything happens, turn the lights back on. All right. Dr. Rosalius, I don't think that- Do you want me to continue working with you? Yes, ma'am. All right, then. Brian, turn off the lights. Yes, Doctor. The room now is in darkness, Miss Davis. Do you feel or see anything? No, I... Yes. Yes, I do. Do you see anything? Yes. Doctor, I don't think- Be quiet! I know what I'm doing! In front of me, the darkness, it's gathering together into a huge, terrible- Not only do you see us. Miss Davis, but everyone else in the room will also see us forming in the blackness. We do not want you, Dr. Asalius, the girl. The lights! Turn on the lights! They're... they're gone. Miss Davis, are you alright? Yes, yes I am. Just as she said, the darkness, I... I saw it form into something too. So did I. What are we going to do, Dr. Hesalius? At the present moment, I don't know. But this much I do know. You must leave this house. Immediately. You must try to get out of their reach. I don't know if this is possible. I hope it is. I shall have to return to my home. 
I must learn if there is some manner by which we can defeat these creatures. For the moment, leave this house, dispose of it, in any manner you see fit, but leave this house. We spent the night in my apartment, the three of us. The following day, Brian and Elaine made arrangements to dispose of the house. In the afternoon, Dr. Azalius called me and asked that I come to see her. David, I'm glad you're here. Anything new, Doctor? Yes, and no. You realize, of course, that this spiritual manifestation is not new, that it has gone on for centuries. No, I wasn't aware of that. It's true, David. Dem Mepassant wrote what was supposedly a fiction story about the manifestation. He called it the Horla. However, according to the information here on my desk, it was taken from an actual case history. Of course, he embroidered this story, added a few touches to something he didn't realize actually existed. But have you found anything with which we can fight them? Everything depends upon the answer I received from a colleague of mine in Paris, Dr. Henry Renault. I dispatched a telegram to him last night. Well, why hasn't he answered by now? There are certain things that must be done. It will take a few days, I'm afraid. We will have to wait, David. There's nothing else we can do. In the next few days, the house was sold and Brian and Elaine moved into a newer, more modern home a few miles away from my apartment. Azalea said it might take a few days for them to build up their power. I spent the nights at the new house. The lights were left on and I watched for any unusual occurrence. In the daytime, I'd returned to my apartment to get some sleep. About four days after Elaine and Brian moved into the new house, I was alone at home when Hosalius called me. Hello? David? Yes, doctor? I hate to tell you this. What's the matter? What's wrong? They were a step ahead of me. I just received word that Renault died or was killed at the very moment I sent the telegram to him. Step by step, they had outwitted us, for they had anticipated every move we'd made. Even Dr. Azalius was at a loss as to what to do. She agreed to meet me at the Davis house. What did you want to see us about, Doctor? Did you find anything more? I'm sorry to say that I haven't. At the moment, I am at a complete loss. I don't know what to do. But what did you want to see us about this evening? Merely to check to see if anything else happened, Miss Davis. Have you seen or heard anything? Not in the house. Only in my dreams. Your dreams? Yes. When I go to sleep at night, in my dreams, in the darkness, I see them. Then it's grown worse. Much worse. I was hoping that it would not have progressed so far. There have been no disturbances in this house, but now they have disturbed your sleep, Miss Davis. Now you must stay awake for as long as you can. I want the three of you to move into my house. Perhaps that will give you more of a protection. That night, we moved over to Hazelia's house. Perhaps Elaine would have more protection there. We might be able to devise some plan of action, some way to beat those beings. For a few days, things were quiet. The shadow people seemed to have been withdrawn. For a while, I thought that we might have succeeded in thwarting their purpose. Elaine no longer complained of troubled sleep, but that condition lasted for only a few days. About ten days later, they made themselves known and felt again. That night, we were in the study, when suddenly... Elaine! What are you looking at? Outside the house, right where the light leaves off, I see them. She's right, Dr. Hesalius. I see them too. What should we do, Doctor? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? There's nothing we can do. We can't just... We can't do anything, Brian. Don't you understand that they have us at their mercy? Greatest man in my field, Henry Renault. If he could do nothing against them, what do you think we can do? She's right, Brian. There's nothing else. As long as the house remains lighted, they will remain outside. 
If the lights were to... That sounds like... The night father was killed. We heard the same sound. The lights! What happened to the lights? Be quiet, please. I thought this might happen. The fireplace. That's right, Miss Davis. As long as this burns, we will be safe, for they cannot advance in the light. They are limited to the darkness. As long as the fire burns, they will have to remain outside this room. Around you. In every room of this house. In the darkness outside. Brian, calm down. I can't stand it. I'm getting out of here. Brian, come back. Don't be stupid. I'm going after him. Stay here. We can't just let him go. He won't have a chance. I doubt if he... Oh my god. The wind, Doctor. Listen to the wind. I know. So ends tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when we next journey down the corridors of Human Pincushion Productions to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events, person, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs> <laughs>